I am Anil Kumar and in this video we will use very basic concepts of normal distribution. The question here is the mass of a soap produced at a factory is distributed normally with mu equals to 300 mu means mean here and sigma the standard deviation equals to 25. Find the probability that a soap mass from a large sample lies within one standards standard division of the mean or two standard divisions right so that is that is the question for us now when we say that we need to find the probability that mass from a large sample that means it's a random sample lies within one standard division so one standard division translates to z score of one correct so plus minus one so this is kind of simpler but what we will do here is we'll use this translation of z score and just confirm how our formulas really work right so so this will be lengthier than what it should be the idea here is to understand the concepts as we move further with normal distribution uh, concepts right so that's the whole idea so let me sketch the two graphs here so first graph here is for the soap right so this is the graph and we'll soon translate this uh, into our z-score graph which is standardized normal graph let's say this is our standardized normal graph is it okay okay so we'll do that translation and try to understand how points translate and how really things happen correct so we'll look into insight of normal distribution concept with a very simple example okay so we are given this is for the soap right where the mean is 300 so this is always the maximum point median and mean for normal distribution is always same in this case it is 300 and that's the mean standard deviation sigma is 25 so if i add 25 I get the point where this transition takes from concave down to concave up correct so this point here is 325 from the symmetry we know all these graphs are symmetric about its mode most frequent point so from the symmetry we will write the other point minus 25 from 300 which is going to be 3 275 300 minus 25 275 correct so that is one sigma away from the initial point correct so if you have to do the translation how do z scores link with these x values so these are x values and we will translate them to z values the translation is linearly you have to move towards the mean which is minus 300 right and then divide by sigma so that when you do mean minus mean correct 300 minus 300, you get zero so that translates to zero correct so score of 300 here translates to zero because 300 minus 300 is zero and if you do 325 then what happens let us see so let us see how 325 translates so if x is equals to 325 in that case z score is going to be 325 minus 300 divided by sigma of 25 sigma is 25 for us correct so therefore it was plus 25 on the right side so 325 minus 300 is 25 divided by 25 is just the number one so that that translates to one is it okay Similarly, if you do 275, then 275 minus 300 will be minus 25. And so 275 translates to minus 1. So that is the translation when we are talking about one standard division of mean, right? So when we are talking about the sample which lies within one stand so that means we are wanting to find this probability so that translates to minus one and plus one right so we did this calculation only to show you that it works 
perfectly well it follows the definition right so when you say what is z-score z-score as you know is number of standard deviations away from the mean right so from the definition also we know one standard deviation away means one z-score is that okay so that's the definition good now let's get back to the question it says we want to find the probability for the random variable to be within within these two limits plus minus one standard deviation which is 275 in our place and 325 okay now here also we'll talk about the concept at times students will ask me should we write greater than or greater than equal to now it really doesn't matter you could write greater than you could write greater than equal to on one side both sides it doesn't matter why because probability in a continuous uh, distribution is zero at exact point so so when we say probability when x equals to 325 equals to 325 is 0. So when we include this in then doesn't it, it doesn't matter correct. So it could be anyway. So you could write with uh, greater than equal to sign here or just greater than it is same. Okay. So that means we need to convert this to z scores which we did that is the standard method. So z score for us was between minus 1 and plus one as soon as you get z scores you would actually use the tables correct so this one is obviously higher from here so what we are trying to do now is if you look at the graph we are saying that the area under the curve which is on this side this is one right so we'll do that and from this area we'll take away this area okay so so the idea is to take away this area. So when you take away this area, what you really get is the area in between, which you are interested in finding. So you get this area. This is what we are interested in finding. So that is all the concept. Correct? So what we will do now here is to write probability when z-score is, let me continue with this, looks good minus probability when z score is so it is in between so when i should say when z square is less than minus one is it okay so less than minus one so it is in between these two that means greater than this and less than this so that means z square is less than this take away probability when z square is less than minus one is it okay now to find that these are very standard values. We can use the standard normalized distribution tables, which are there at the end of your book. I've just taken a print, which is not really very good. Anyway, it works for us. So we are looking for two values. We, ha we have this standard normal distribution. This table represents area to the left of the z-score. That really means that, that if I have a graph like this, right then to the left means uh, to the left means this area okay so this is how my values are getting represented so we'll write copy the value when z is less than one so it's on this side of my page less than one is this value which is so 1.0 0, 0 correct so that is 84134 0.84 134. So it is 0 0.84134 minus the probability for z score to be less than minus 1. So minus 1 is there. Minus 1. So that is 0 0.15866. Right. So it is point, uh, 0 0.15866. At times you could actually round these values when you write them down. Right. So so you can use the calculator to find the difference between the two. So we have 0 0.84134 take away 0 0.15866, which is equals to 0 
two six eight. I have purposely taken up to all the decimal places to show you one more thing. So what probability you get as expected around sixty eight percent. Do you see that? So it is let me rewrite this in a big number, which is sixty eight point we can say two seven percent. Is it okay? So that is what you get. You now we know this probability is around 68%. Is it okay? So that is the kind of actual value, correct? Now, <clears throat> this is rounded to a whole number. This is rounded to kind of 100 place. So if you get this question in your test and you're not provided with standardized tables, you can still do it because you know what is a standard deviation? What is the probability when it is one standard deviation away from the mean? It is 68.27%, right? So that is how you can do it. Now, I hope you have understood this. So this could have been done without the calculator or tables, right? Let's do the next part, which is two standard deviations away. So that is to say we want to find probability when our random variable is within two standard so 2 standard means we have to add and subtract 50. Is it okay? So let me take another ink. So we'll now we are doing 2. So we are going to a point which is kind of here. 50 away from 300. So it is 250 on the left side and 350 to the right side. Is it okay? So these numbers are 250 and 350. We are saying now we are doing two standard deviations, right? So, so we are saying two standard deviations away from mean. So from definition, z-score is number of standard deviations away from mean. We could write this as probability between minus 2 for z-score, is that okay, to 2. That is from the definition also you can write. You don't always have to use the formula. And if it is a test question without calculators, we can say approximately it is how much. You know, the area under the curve between two standard deviation is approximately 95%, right? So, so now we are saying the area between these two points. So if it translates to minus 2, to mine to plus two right so we are trying to do this area now area under the curve I mean okay let's go like this this area right so that little thing which you see here this is 95 percent of the whole so the idea is we should get that as our answer what we will do is we'll just verify correct so what are we going to verify with we're saying what is the probability for z-score to be less than or equals to 2? Take away probability for z-score to be less than or equals to minus 2, right? So, so we are taking away from here, this side, we are left with the center portion. Is that okay? So that is what we are trying to do. So for 2, what is the value? So it is on this side, one side I have positive values. So for 2, I have value written here. It is, we'll just round it, we'll say 0.977, is it okay, 0.977. So this is 0 0.977, three decimal places is good enough to work. And then minus two for us is, look for minus two, okay. So minus two is right there, which is uh, 0 0.022. Seven. So I will write round this to 0 0.023. Okay. So we'll write this as 0 0.023. 0 0.023. Correct. So that is what we have. And when you take out this, then what do we get? So 7 take away 3 is 4. 7 take away 2 is 5. 9 take away 0 is 9. So we get 0 0.954, which is 95.4 percent do you see that so from the calculation using the tables we get almost the same result and that is what it is correct so the area under the curve or the probability 
of the random variable to be within two standard deviations is 95.4 percent correct so that is kind of good to know and it is a standard question if you are given if you are asked what is the area under the curve between two standard deviations the answer is 95.4 percent whatever may be the given mean or standard deviation that's the beauty of normal distribution curves and therefore these standardized curves can always be used. I'm Anil Kumar and I hope this simple example helps you to understand the concept why we translate, do this linear translation to z-score and then find the probabilities for any given normal distribution. Thank you and all the best.